using the UN system to uh, protect the Palestinians against dispossession, settlement, uh, mm -hmm. demolitions, mm -hmm. uh, and other losses that if the UN Security Council should refuse to act on an initiative to engage the Security Council in some way, yeah. the, under the UN Charter, uh, the so-called Uniting for Peace provision, the General Assembly could be convened, could and it could act upon the majority vote of its members. Yes. Uh, uh, would you uh, advocate that uh, uh, some kind of initiative to the Security Council, uh, and if the Security Council cannot act, uh, that the Council would refer it to the General Assembly? Yeah, the United for Peace um, uh, recourse in the Security Council is important and we've used it several times before. The most significant example was with the wall, remember? The, the uh, strategic alliance between Israel and the U.S. Uh, part of its component, an essential component, is that Israel, is that the U.S. will use its veto power in the Security Council to prevent any censure or sanctions for Israel, of Israel and for Israel. So the They've used about what, 34, 36 vetoes now? 32, I think a bit more than 32 vetoes anyway, to bail Israel out and to give it this, this cover of, of immunity. Uh, we, when we went, and, and that was really clear, because the American administration told us this wall is not only illegal when they first saw it. This was during the Bush administration, Condi Rice. They saw that wall, they were horrified. They said it's illegal. So we went to the Security Council with a complaint about the wall that was built on Palestinian land. And we said we want a resolution so that Israel will stop building this wall, separating Palestinians from Palestinians. Still, your home could be here, and the wall could separate you from your garden, from your land. From Anyway. Um, I can't go to my uh, office in Jerusalem, let you know, because the wall is right in front of my office. So we open the window and we see a wall. Now, neither Israelis nor Palestinians can come to that office. So anyway, we went to the Security Council. The U.S. negotiated, negotiated, watered down the resolution, and then vetoed it. So we uh, uh, went to the General Assembly under the, the uh, United for Peace. And the General Assembly decided to refer the issue to the International Court of Justice in The Hague. The International Court of Justice gave out an advisory decision that this wall is illegal, it has to be demolished, and all the people who were uh, injured and who, whose interests were harmed by the wall have to be compensated by Israel immediately. Of course, this resolution was taken back to the General Assembly, which was supposed to be now binding on all the members who referred it to the International Court of Justice in The Hague, but nothing was done. The wall is still there, and it's ongoing, and uh, Israel has not been brought to compliance. I don't know if there's the, they keep telling us there's no international enforcement agency, law enforcement agency, but actually they can wage wars. I mean, look, they waged wars on Iraq for nothing, for no reason, for no uh, evidence. And yet, then unable to do anything to enforce the will of the international community on Israel. We're not asking them to wage wars. We're asking them to hold Israel accountable. Now, uh, we, we also went to United for Peace, I think a couple of times before that, to get resolutions. And we do have resolutions. We have also Security Council resolutions. But if you cannot bring Israel to compliance, this is a real question. How do you bring Israel to compliance without waging war? without sending troops. I, I can't imagine in the, um, in the foreseeable future that the international community will decide to wage war on Israel. It, it's a country above the law anyway, let alone, you know, subject to wars. And we're not asking them to wage wars. We're just asking there are ways, and ways that include sanctions, ways that include all, all the U.S. has to do is tell Israel it will lift its cover, its legal cover. It will not use the veto in the Security Council. It will not lose the Goldstone report here and there. It will allow uh, a special tribunal maybe to be set up. Um, it will also begin to rethink, to rethink its munificence, its very generous billions and billions worth of support for Israel. And there are many Israelis now who are worried. 
and who are saying this rift between the U.S. and Israel will cost us so much that we won't be able to continue. Now, if uh, the U.S. takes decisions. But uh, the question is, how do you hold Israel accountable? How do you implement, how do you enforce international law and the will of the international community? And we will continue to go to the U.N. Security Council, United for Peace, General Assembly, International Criminal Court, International Court of Justice, and wherever we can get some sort of justice. I have a question here about the status of the Palestinian Legislative Council. Uh -huh. uh, what do you think about the legitimacy of the current PLC speaker? In your opinion, who is a legitimate speaker? Uh, what uh, should be done to resurrect the Palestinian <coughs> Legislative Council as the uh, democratically elected? Yeah, uh, that's very painful. That's a sad question. Authority. Very sad. I think the best way is to have elections, frankly. I think, in all honesty, our sec I mean, and this is, I've been in the, the PLC member since 90s, January 96. It's been a long time. But I think that the, the uh, current PLC is not really legal. It's even though we, and I was part of the, the uh, Palestine National Council that, and the Central Committee Council that voted to extend the term of the PLC and the president. But I believe our term is very clear. And I believe, OK, so our term was extended, but we are working as individuals. We are not working as a legally constituted body because we don't have a quorum. Huh? We are divided. The Gaza people are separate from the West Bank people. And the um, block of uh, reform and change, which is the Hamas block, does not meet. Now, is there a speaker? I don't think we have a speaker. I don't even think we have a leadership committee in the, even though we do have blocks and representative bodies of parliamentary blocks. Because in order to elect the speaker and the, the office of the speaker, you have to have a new term. When President Mahmoud Abbas called for the uh, P, uh, PLC to convene in 2007, in order to have the second term, and in order to elect the new speaker and his officers, or her officers, um, they refused to meet. We didn't have a quorum, because they didn't want to have elections. They were worried that Israel had, elect, had uh, arrested about 30-some members from Hamas. So Hamas lost its automatic majority. We promised them, we said, uh, of course, I'm an independent, uh, and I represented the third way, and the Fatah, and the PFLP, and the DFLP, and People's Party. We all said, we will elect Dwight. We will elect the same people you elected. Huh? But let's convene so that we can protect the legitimacy, the legality of the parliament. It's very important. They didn't show up. And we didn't have a quorum, because they didn't trust. They thought that if we met, we would elect other people, and then Aziz Dwek, who was in prison, would lose his uh, post. Which meant, then, by law, that we haven't had a second term. We had only one term, which is 2006. 2007, we didn't have our meeting for the term in order to elect. And it's a four-year term, so you need to have four elections for the speaker and, and so on. And they thought that, de facto, then, Aziz Dwek and the whole office will continue to hold office. But they don't. The law doesn't allow them to do that. There's a, there's a hiatus there, which means that if you don't elect, you don't have officers. So we ended up in the West Bank devising, you know, being very creative. We set up not committees, because that would violate the law. We set up working groups. We work as individuals and blocks. We set up a a representative body of the heads of all blocks, and we meet and we follow up and so on. But we cannot carry out any real legislation or any real accountability and oversight for the governments. We have an executive functioning without our oversight. 